Let us pray. God of grace and demand, you challenge us to reclaim our baptismal identity as those whose lives are built on your call and your promises, not on the easy, seductive forces around us. Stir our hearts that we may engage your transforming word in new ways and rediscover its power to save. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have held the last of what remains of an earthly life in my hands, writes the pastor. Whole people now only ashes. Years of living reduced to fine rubble, relationships, work, dreams, packaged in a plastic bag to be scattered or buried or placed in a concrete square or a crafted urn. Time after time, the wind has blown or I have brushed my hand against my side, leaving a trace of the remains on my robe of ritual sackcloth. It used to bother me, as I did not want those gathered to think I had carelessly handled the dust to which their loved one had returned. Eventually, I came to welcome the imposition, a mark of the communion of saints clinging to me as I worship. Those words carry no more powerful meaning to me than on this day. I remember those who have gone to the grave who no longer need to be reminded of their human fragility. I remember their faces because, like you this evening, I remember placing a cross swiped in ash across their foreheads. Woman. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. This day is a reminder of the names and the faces and the faithfulness. Shirley, Katie, Jenna, Dean, Dawn, Lorraine, Dorothy, Susan, Fabrizio, Tim, Elmer, Ryan, Peter, Lloyd, Wally, Dick, Patricia. I wonder whose name you would speak in this moment. I remember these names and countless others for the mark they left on my life. For some, it was a mark of faith. For some, it was a mark of guidance. For a few, it was a mark of correction. For many, it was a mark of love on my life and on the lives of others. We usually come to this day and we are so caught up in ourselves, tending our own mortality as we feel the dust of ash on our foreheads rain down on our noses, that we forget this day as a reminder of the unfolding story of God's love for a people, for all people, for each of us. Such a story of love and promise, it is almost unimaginable. And so God designs a divine interruption in each of our lives as we are brought or we find our ways to the waters of the baptismal font. And after the word of God is spoken and the baptismal water is splashed on our head, the sign of the cross is traced in oil on our forehead with the words, Child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Ash Wednesday is our reminder that the cross is still there. 
And for a brief time, maybe an hour this day, maybe until you wash your face and go to bed this night, the cross of ashes is visible for the whole world to see. It is a message, a reminder of what extremes God will go to to give us life and hope. And all of us know the world is in desperate need of both. And so, like the Magi who visit Jesus and are so transformed by their encounter that they leave what they have known behind. They travel home to their countries by a different road. So too do we who encounter the very breath of God in the mingling of God's word and water find a new road laid before us. It is a way other than our own. And it is seldom the way we would choose. So what that means to each of us who follows in the footsteps of our Savior is that the way, the road God calls us to travel is one that will take us out of our safe, walled cities into uncomfortable places, revealing roads we would never choose ourselves. And despite our culture of self-indulgence, God invites us to walk an alternative path, one that the world does not know, one of humility and justice and peace. So in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul tells us this. Paul says, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing the things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. God chose what is low and despised in the world, to reduce to nothing the things that are low and despised in the form of Jesus. And the rulers of this world are not finished with him yet. And because these truths can be found woven into the very fabric of our lives, we find it easier, so much easier to give up on what it means to be a person of faith, to follow as a disciple our master. We find it so much easier to give it up because, like much of the world, we find that to settle for a common, generic identity that is part patriotism, part consumerism, part violence, and part affluence, so much easier to walk that road. But God disrupts our lives with an invitation. God invites us to stop this day and start again. Stopping our motivation marked by our greed and our anxiety. And starting again the work of compassion and generosity. And so in God's invitation, we find ourselves on the road once again. And on the road, we will meet those who point us toward Jerusalem and to the cross that overshadows all life. And in the days ahead, we will find ourselves in the wilderness. We will meet Jesus and the devil in the desert places of our lives. And we will learn that the struggles we face, we do not face alone, that Jesus knows the struggles we face, the hunger that goes unsatisfied, our need for evidence of God's existence and care, and that insatiable need we own 
to be in control. And when we leave the wilderness, we will meet Nicodemus going to Jesus at night to seek answers to questions and calm his doubts. Perhaps you want to go with him with your own questions and doubts. God knows you are welcome. We'll meet a woman at a well in the high heat of the day who will encounter Jesus and the truth of her whole life unfolded before her and she will learn of Jesus' promise of life-giving water. And she will be transformed by that meeting. And we will watch with our own eyes as Jesus gives the miracle of sight to a man born blind. And when we witness the healing, we will wonder if the blind man sees Jesus more clearly through his blindness than we are able to see with our God-gifted sight. And then we will join a family as they weep at a grave. And the tears that we see them offer, our own will join. We did not know this man named Lazarus, but before our very eyes, we will witness God's promise of resurrection. And each moment along the way over these next 40 days, each person will leave their mark on us. And it will be a mark of trust and a mark of doubt and a mark of truth and a mark of healing and a mark of new life. And if you say, oh, Pastor Chris, I don't need all that. Just get me to Easter. Except tonight, there are families standing outside of cores who need a mark of new life. And there are people who will be afraid to go into those buildings tomorrow, and they need a mark of healing. And so before you sidestep the journey, to Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Easter. Imagine this life without knowing the marks, the touch of the Master to you. And so feeling those marks touch our lives, we will be reminded we will be reminded of the mark of water from the baptismal font, the mark of ash this day, a mark of faith, a mark of guidance, a mark of correction, a mark of love, a mark of the communion of saints. All of this preparing us for the day we stand beneath our Savior hanging on a cross where the mark of the shadow of death will wound us most deeply. And then, brothers and sisters, we will see the marks of nails in the hands of our Savior. And we will hear Jesus remind the disciple Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. This mark of ash, we so often believe it is to remind us of the power of death and how fitting it is this day for us to remind us of that. But my friends, God promises us life. And this day, whether the mark comes with oil or it comes with ash, you are reminded of the never-failing promise. Child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen.